This tutorial video will be talking about how to create an unbreakable mark and also how to break an unbreakable mark. First we're going to be talking about how to actually have that unbreakable mark. So we have Jeff in the grey and Corey in the white. And I guess the secret to an unbreakable mark is actually focus. So it doesn't come down to any sort of technique. There's a lot of different techniques that work, um, but it's all about focus. And the main point to the focus is making sure that you're aware where the thrower is. So if the thrower is doing something and you're with them and you're moving with them, it's going to be very tough for them to throw. And then the other point to having a great mark is if you're forcing a forehand, you have to make sure you commit to that. Right? If you don't commit to that force, then it's going to be pretty easy for them to break you. So there's some people that will try so hard to stop the forehand, so they'll stop the force throw so hard that the breakthrough is super easy. So you have to kind of play in between. You have to make sure that the force throw is difficult, but at the same time, you're not leaving a big hole open to have that breakthrough going on. Um, some other things that work on the mark is being on the balls of your feet. So just like in tennis when you're receiving a serve, if you're standing flat-footed, it's tough to move and the thrower will easily get you off balance so you have to make sure to be ready on the balls of your feet so you won't get off balance and also it's where you're looking with your eyes so some people will look in the eyes of the thrower some people will look at the hips some people look at the disc some people look at the feet whatever works for you is gonna be what's best if you're looking at the hips all the time and people are throwing over top of you or you know breaking it pretty easily then it doesn't work, you have to try something else. So we're just going to run through a couple scenarios. They'll demonstrate it a little bit, and I just want you to see, I guess, what an unbreakable mark is all about. Okay, so Corey, put on a mark, and Jeff, try and break him. How many times? Good. That's good. So notice that had Corey not been paying attention, he easily could have gotten broken. Jeff's taller than Corey, so he has the reach advantage, but Corey was quick enough on the balls of his feet, ready that he got there. Um, let's do one now where you try and take away the force throw so hard that it's easy for him to get a break. You mean take away the open side? Yeah. yeah. Okay. See, so that's exactly what you don't want to do. That's not an unbreakable mark. Okay, Corey wanted so badly to stop that forehand that the backhand was really easily open, right? Uh, another thing you can do as a marker is instead of keeping your arms out the entire time, keep them in and you can sort of jab them out as you go. It creates the illusion that you're taller than you actually are. And the thrower might throw close to your body, whereas when you stick your arm out, right, you can, you can get a hand on that throw. Another thing to think about is instead of stepping across, actually step back. So just like a goalie in hockey, the goalie will come out of his net to cut down the angles, just like a marker will. So if a marker goes straight across, it's easy to get around, whereas if they step back, um, it'll, it'll cut down the angles a bit. So just do that as well. Just demonstrate what that looks like if you're stepping out. Especially when he's taller, you want to really cut down that angle. Good. Perfect. Okay, so really think about what you're doing on the mark. You're only going to be there for maximum 10 seconds, right? Focus for 10 seconds. It's really not that tough. And then the rest of the time, play defense. But those 10 seconds, make sure that they're going to have a really tough time getting off that forehand and don't let that backhand out, okay? Obviously, the other side is that inside forehand, right? Don't let that go. Same thing, just be focusing. The flip side of that is how to break the unbreakable mark. So how to break an unbreakable mark, um, it's a similar idea, focus obviously, but you really want to get them off balance, and I recommend actually forcing or faking less. Because if you fake too much, then the, the mark's going to know that it's, it's not real. Um, so there was actually a really good blog post by Idris Nolan a few years ago. Idris played with Jam, one of the top ultimate players in the world at the time, and he said that you really shouldn't fake as a handler, and you really don't have to. Right? So actually one really good fake is where you're standing here and you're just moving your head, moving your shoulder, you fake a little bit. If you ever watch hockey, you'll see guys go in on breakaways, little head fake, the goalie moves, that's all it takes. So if Jeff can get Corey moving one way, then he can easily throw the other way. One easy way to do that is just get him misdirected, get him off balance. And if he's standing there throwing these huge fakes, Corey can just stand there all day. Or as you saw earlier, he'll keep up with them. So breaking an unbreakable mark, you really want to get that marker off balance. And what I recommend for that is just practicing those little tiny fakes. And in a game, it's going to be a lot easier. So when you're doing three-man or when you're doing drills in practice where you're actually working on marking the thrower, 
you're, you're really focused on that. There's not really people at field, so you can focus on the mark a lot. In a game, you're focused on a lot more. So in a game, you'll, you'll actually find, as a thrower, that it's easier to get those throws off. But let's just run through a scenario here where Jeff gets him off balance with a little head fake, a little shoulder fake. So you can see it takes a lot of practice to get the timing down. Doesn't always work, right? Just especially because I just said exactly what Jeff was going to do and Corey knows. So Corey is reading that really well. <laughs> but you'll, you can actually freeze people sometimes. Balance. I've seen guys actually fall down before. I'll mark you. I've seen guys fall down on that. Um, and so I, I find that that is a really good fake. And like I said in a game, sometimes all you need is just, just that little one. And it doesn't have to be a huge one. So that is a tutorial for the Calgary Ultimate Association on how to have an unbreakable mark and how to beat an unbreakable mark. <laughs> it's fun. Like, I don't know what time it's like. Damn it! <laughs> 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 like that! <laughs>